continuously build and develop the jcore platform and also allow for self-service tools and i have our nice diy um, information logo there and and this allows us to partner with other um, companies and technology and integrate into the jcore platform so highwire has been in this business for over 20 years um, there's, this is a nice uh, lineage that we have for JCore. Following the mid 90s release of the H1O platform, um, we actually began developing H2O. And this platform followed the Web 2.0 tr trend, so you might have haven't heard that in a bit, but we have our H2O and then Web 2.0. And we created an extremely reliable platform that still lives today um, with about 150 publishers still leveraging it. Um, but Highwire really wanted to continue, continuously be building um, for easier customization, support, and integration with other publishers, uh, different technologies, um, and even third-party tools. So in 2013, we built JCore. Um, it's built on Drupal and an open source framework that gives us a deeper flexibility and ability to develop new features more quickly. jCore leverages all the knowledge that we've learned over the years um, and integrated it into our current platform, which is jCore. And we have uh, many, many journals on jCore right now and over 300 um, that are leveraging this technology from small societies to um, the largest, most prolific journals in the world. All right, so I've given you an overview, but what does it do? Well, it be offers the best-in-class services for the finest publishers in the world. It is the technology backbone for their publishing program. And it can be very flexible. As you can tell, the three examples here, we have the BMJ, Science, and Journal of the American Heart, and they all look very different. Um, it's extremely flexible and offers the best-in-class technology for your publishing program. So let's go through a site walkthrough. So our design philosophy is around usability and design itself. So we really want to boost discoverability, increase traffic, engagement, and really improve navigation and ad configurability across the board. And that's a continuous philosophy and usability. Um, for design, we want it to be clean and clear. Um, everything that we've learned over the last 20 years, we've been able to incorporate into our designs. And we're continuing that process on a daily basis to make sure that we're offering the best designs. Uh, we want it to be easy to use, as well as provide readers with browse options and flexible layouts. Um, so. A big component here is, and this is being able to monetize your content. We really design so that you can sell and uh, promote more content. And there's also room to grow. We all we always know that there's more technology out there, and that you things to integrate with and ways to promote your content. So, JCore allows us to uh, have the strong foundation to grow um, your publishing program. So let's go over the overall site elements. Um, the site is designed in a two-column design, and you'll see this throughout um, Highwire's properties, and this will get into Folio, too, when we start moving into that direction in the webinar. Um, it's designed for reading and scanning. Um, it's really optimized for the reading experience and just making sure that you can get to the article or to the issue um, that you need to get to, as well as promoting new content um, on and it's the example where you see featured articles at the bottom. Um, our site header area has um, a lot of room for uh, expanding branding. Um, it offers you a great navigation um, with fly-down menus that are, allow you to easily access different aspects of the page. Um, we promote your site through social icons so you can have a social presence and link it to your page. And we also have our search up here in the top right-hand corner. 
Um, you can easily link to other journals that you publish um, on Highwire. So we can have a drop down menu with all the journals that are available for publication. All right. So there's ample space for branding, as I mentioned, and these are the other aspects that I, I talked about. We have our advanced search in the right hand side. Um, and then we also have an announcement area. And you can see on the page where it says welcome to e ERJ Open Research that we give you this space that you can easily edit and offer messages to your readers. So if there's a conference coming up or if there is an event or anything along those lines, even new issues, you can, in you can include a message here. And that's all editable. And you'll see um, editing of that in just a moment. And there's the menus, and there's our snippet. At the bottom of the page, we have a link-rich footer, and I've heard this described as a fat footer, which I actually enjoy the uh, title for. But this is actually extremely important because it gives you a mini site map that's available on your publication. And we found through research, and we do a lot of research around um, analytics as well as heat maps to see how users are using the site and this is actually informs our design process that this footer is extremely useful for people who haven't exactly found what they're looking for and they we've gotten to the bottom of the page and they need to access something very quickly so current issue is a very hot one um, as well as more information about this journal so it good, offers a, a backup for readers who haven't found exactly what they're looking for. We offer advertising throughout the journals, um, and then we're going to talk about a couple of these. We have our standard leaderboard placement. Um, leaderboards appear at the top of the site above the journal content. So this is another way to monetize your journal content um, by selling advertisements. And you can see the two that we have here. Another example of advertising, and this is, a, this is what you'll see as you navigate through the journal, we have our standard skybox uh, or skyscraper ads. They'll appear in the right column of our two column design. And these can appear throughout the journal. All right. So let's talk about the key pages. That offered the framework, but now let's, off, let's talk about the key pages that are within jCore. So there are a lot of components that make up jCore, and we're only going to go over the highlighted ones, but your publishing program can benefit from all of these pages, as well as advanced pages that, where you can create it, um, additional pages that are custom to your journals. So starting with the home page, there's three standard options. So I mentioned that jCore is very flexible, but out of the box, you can start with one of our three standard options um, if you so choose. So the first standard option is we have info about the journal. So we highlight the current issue and then also about the journal itself. And we offer more information um, you know, throughout about what's happening in the journal. The second option is highlighting new content. Um, and this is a popular one where we want to highlight what's being published ahead of print. And then we're also highlighting the current issue in the second column. And this is really a content driven. So if you're a publication that's been around for a while and your, your readers and most people around the world know exactly who you are, you want to highlight new content um, as much as possible. Um, for someone, a journal that is relatively new or is not as well known, they may choose to do the about the journal. And the last one is likely our most popular, which is our deliver visual impact. And this is great because it offers you a carousel to offer, like, offer information about things that are happening in your journal, um, in your society and things like that. And then we also have our current issue on the right hand side and then published ahead of print. So it's kind of a mixture where you're able to 
do some marketing as well as highlight the newest content. All right, so drilling down to a table of contents where we get to an issue level, the table of contents is really designed for scannability. So there's no repetitive text. We don't have, we remove check boxes that impede scanning. It's really done, uh, handled by research that was done by John Sack before we built jQuery. This was highly important because we've had, you know, as you've seen, H1O and H2O platforms, but we wanted to bring, bring out the best in what we learned throughout the years. So we did research and we, and we streamlined the table of contents to easily scan. Um, and we did this through user research groups, um, as well as looking at analytics and other tools. Um, we have our icons on the left-hand side that allow you to see if you have access to these articles. So it would be locked if it's not available, um, if it's under subscription control, for example, or if it's, um, or if it's unlocked, we, have, we could have open access or, or accessible to the reader. There's the second column of the table of contents, which gives you a little more information. So you can search throughout the issue. Um, you can learn more about the cover, as well as see an index of authors. Um, we have our jump to section, where we, right now we see editorials, original article reviews, which actually floats as you read, which is extremely great because you can navigate through. And you'll see this on the article page as well. And we also have our skyscraper ad um, that'll go under that section of the page. And that, as I mentioned, can be throughout the journal. All right, so the article, this is the, the uh, bread and butter of JCore. Um, and it's a page that we designed and prior to, prioritized our information. And this is very crucial because we want to offer the best reading experience we can. Um, it is a tab display, uh, meaning that we want to offer the most prominent information, which is the article. But we also want to offer figures and data, info and metrics, and e-letters. E-letters being a response to um, section where you can uh, include a response as a reader or a uh, fellow uh, researcher in the field. Um, on the right hand side we have our, as you, as you see, we have our um, table of contents information and then we have our toolbar. Alright, so when you going a little deeper into the article um, we have each author is listed um, and it's just the name, but when you hover over the name, you actually can see a lot more information. This is really nice if you're looking for a, uh, a author's institution, um, affiliations, as well as Google Scholar, PubMed, and we also have a search within the site uh, for this author. So you can find additional papers by this author. Um, we also will put the or or ORCID record if delivered with the content. So that's very nice too as ORCID continues to grow and be a record of choice. So as I mentioned before, we have our article tools and we'll start at the bottom right below the text. We have um, email article, print, download PDF, download PowerPoints, um, we have our alert service, which is a fantastic way to find out about new content that's published. Um, a response, we have e-letters, which allows you, uh, you as a reader to respond. Um, you have the ability to share, so we have all sorts of sharing tools. Um, citation tools, if you want to download in, the, uh, in our popular uh, citation formats. And uh, we also have our permissions. Um, Creative Commons license will display right here also. And then we have some other prominent social bookmarking tools. More of the more uh, interesting ones where you have the ability to tweet, like, um, bookmark, and then, and then other tools. And we add over time and we, we change them as different ones become popular. Over on the right-hand side, uh, we have our subjects. 
related articles cited by, and these are cited by articles where you can see who cited this article, and this can be across the high wire system, um, and as well as um, similar articles. So you can call out similar, similar articles by subject and, and areas like that. All right, so if you hover over references within an article, you can actually see the uh, citation, so you can actually very quickly grab that and, and then access it as necessary. And we have links to different areas where you can search and find those articles. Um, we have our jump to, which allows you to jump down the page. And this section floats with the page, so you can easily find it always. And you can jump to different sections. We found that oftentimes people will jump to the figures and data uh, very quickly, look through it, and then sort of scan the article as they go um, past figures and data to so make sure they're finding exactly what they like. So this has been a highly used feature um, on the uh, article page. All right, so we also display keywords in line. Um, you can see on the top image, we have our keywords here. Um, and then we also do figures in, in line with the article, which is fantastic. As you're reading, you can easily view figures and videos, um, and you can view them and, uh, in, and just play the video in, in line um, and then view as necessary. And they will pop up if they're an image. You can view and see a larger view of it. Um, but it offers a fantastic reading experience, um, and it's very popular in the high wire community. Here's an example of uh, the next tab over, which is figures and data. As I mentioned, very, very popular. Um, so this will bring out all the figures and data within the article and organize them together. Um, so you can either read in line or you can go to the figures and, and uh, data tab. The info and metrics is an extremely popular uh, tab also. Uh, we have our author publication information as well as author info. Um, we will have info and metrics as you scroll down. Um, so you see article usage data table. Um, so you can have just a table of data by month of usage and uh, full text reads. Um, you can add on alt metrics to your publication as well as usage graphics. So you can do daily usage um, information um, and see it graphed out as you choose a date. Uh, very cool features for allowing to see readers to see how your articles are being used or uh, how's their, how they're being or how often they're being used. So jCore has a full-fledged advanced search um, with all the fields that you'll need to find the exact content. If you're looking for something very, very precise, we will be able to deliver that based on this information. Our search is built on solar, so uh, it's an industry standard, and we are um, constantly improving our search and making sure that it's offering the most relevant results. Um, you can search by keyword, citation, DOI, as well as um, you know standard search options for limiting results. And then if you're looking for author or title, um, you can easily do so. And we also offer a figure search. So the results are paginated. Um, we'll show the term in the context. So as you can see here, um, we're showing the information in the paragraph where it's being displayed. Um, and also we all have facets. And these are across all our journals. We have facets for you know publication date, article types, subjects, resource, things like that. So these you can easily refine to find what you're looking for. So site administration. Um, JCore is built to offer the features that you need to administer the site yourself. And, and we do this as an ongoing process, and we're always building new self-service tools um, and new features to allow you to build it and grow your publishing program. So when you log in as an editor and an admin, you're going to have this nice 
navigation bar um, that allows you to jump through and edit different pages. Um, so there's a lot of different areas here to edit, um, but a lot of the main ones are menus, snippets, um, node queues, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, it's, it's a Drupal word for um, editing line items and things like that, um, as well as populating carousels and other lists. So menus, um, as I mentioned before, we have an easy to navigate drop down menu section that is fully manageable by you, the publisher. So going into menu management, you can see we have a flexible drag and drop option. Um, as you add new pages, you can go up to the top here and add a new link. You can organize them as necessary. You can edit where they land. You can remove them. It's all fully manageable here. Um, so this is an area where if you're adding new pages, it's very popular to say, oh, I have a new advanced page that talks about how authors should submit. I'll build the page, add it here, and then it'll automatically show up in your um, menu system. And here's an example of where you edit the menu. Uh, very simple form. Um, the path will allow you to um, show where it shows up on the URL um, and where it shows up in the page. Editing lists, and I said the, the uh, funny word there back there in node queue, but really what it comes down to is editing lists. Um, an example of a list is on the left-hand side where we have our top topics, most cited and most read. Top topics is editable by the by you, the publisher. Um, it's just a simple drag and drop where you can add new content and then drag and drop and show and highlight the most important one. Um, after you drag and drop and save, what happens is the front page will update with this list. And here's an example of where you can choose articles to add to this list. So once you add it, organize it, save it, it'll be updated. Snippets, and I had to put an exclamation point here and I think it's a fun one. Um, snippets are a way to provide messages and other options to your readers that are editable um, from the administration tools. So once you go to, um, you can actually see empty snippet, hover over to edit, we have our snippet right here at the top. So if you want to highlight a conference or an event or something along those lines, you can do so right here. And what's great is you're going to have this drop down. When you're logged in as an editor, you will see a drop down menu where you can click edit snippet and you can actually very quickly add a new message you know, or even remove it if you don't ha have anything to highlight this month or this week. So. We can move snippets around the page when we're building your journal so that it shows this is a very popular place because it's right there and the, you know, the main above the fold reading experience. Here's an example of editing a snippet. Very simple form. Um, it's really meant for um, just quick and edit it, editing, but it op offers some great HTML tools, so if you need to make any style changes, you can very easily do so. And actually, I want to jump back real fast, and I want to highlight one aspect. We do have a preview, and oftentimes people are afraid to make sure, you know, check these before they publish them, though, because they're not quite sure about the format. So we allow you to preview. All right. So I've mentioned advanced pages a few times. And here's an example of an advanced page. This page isn't a stock out of the box design. This, this advanced page is very custom and allows you to edit and make the page flexible to your needs. So here's an example um, where, where we see the Journal of Cell Biology has instructions for their authors. And this is a totally custom page that allows you, allows the publisher to highlight information for their authors. These pages are very easy to edit, um, and they offer uh, some great functionality. It offers the um, WYSIWYG editor, 
um, so that you can build and style a page, you can add a title, uh, and then very easily uh, view it and preview it. So that was sort of the self-service section, but now I want to talk about the jcore integrations and really the open platform experience allows us to really integrate across highwire as well as outside of highwire with third party tools so there's a lot of complementary products um, at highwire and these all integrate with jcore uh, we offer bench press which is our submission management tool in peer review um, we have our custom collection toolkit where you can reuse content and build new collections. So if you want to build a, a subject category and add um, some advanced page-like features where you can add a paragraph describing it, you can add a logo, things like that, you can easily do so using collection uh, custom collection toolkit. And direct publishing. Um, you can publish blogs, news, and other time-sensitive information. Um, and this is great if you want to have a more living journal experience not for just not just the content but if you want to add information that's um, up to date um, and gives the readers an opportunity to come back to the journal to find more we have our e-commerce um, suite we where you can monetize content and it's a full shopping cart experience uh, we have folio, folio which I won't go into too deep right now because you'll see some slides soon uh, we have Impact Visor, uh, which highlights early citations and usage data visualizations. And this is a fantastic way to gain um, what, what we consider advanced editorial business insight into your publishing program. Um, and along with that, we have our Usage Visor, where you can see article level detail um, about what, how it's being used. As, even as uh, you know, you can see turnaway data. Um, and it offers great visualizations uh, as you build out these reports. And these are extremely valuable tools to give you deeper insight into what's happening with your program. Um, you can also have an umbrella site. So if you have multiple journals, um, you can very, uh, very um, easily integrate them all into an umbrella site. Um, and we can even do that with folio and journals so you, that you can have your JCore and your folio content integrated together. So that's just where we are at Highwire, but we integrate with many different third parties. And this is just a small example of the different areas where we integrate. Um, some of the most popular ones is right there in the middle is Google. We work um, in depth with Google Scholar and Google to make sure that our pages are optimized and it's really baked into our design ethos and experience. Um, we integrate with Dryad for data. Um, we, look, we integrate with ReadCube, um, Tizra, which I'll be showing in a moment, um, Crossref, um, and all, a lot of different areas where you can really highlight content. Um, from different areas and as well as distribute content to other uh, systems. So what powers jCore? Well, jCore is actually right here. So it's the front end display of the entire Highwire technology stack. And there's many, many different components to the Highwire technology stack, as you can see. But at the surface level, we have our, you know, jCore, our folio, um, as well as APIs, analytics tools, and um, dashboard tools. Um, they're from underneath jCore, and this offers all our different tools where we have access control. You have full access and subscription control with, uh, with using jCore, um, using our tools and interface or services and features behind the scenes. Um, we have our search, we have RSS, our alerts metadata delivery so you can find out about what's happening with articles and your subjects or your areas. Um, as well as full library admin tools. Um, and below that we have our semantic activities where we're tagging content, highlighting them, adding links, making sure they're ready for distribution throughout the web. And underneath it all, we have our Highwire Express, 
and this is a key component to all of HiWire's technology. HiWire Express integrates the content, so it's deposited through HiWire Express, so let's say your latest issue, it's deposited to HiWire Express, um, it's validated and stored in XML, and then it goes up the ladder and is fully processed and then delivered to the front end and then is available and then is available for reports and analytics and for tools um, for libraries where we need full counter reporting. So one of the hallmarks of uh, the being on JCore is our uptime for 2006 was 99.96%. We surpassed some of the largest web entities on the internet. We are now the leaders for industry uptime, and we, we are dedicated to providing reliable access and uptime. And it is a key hallmark of what HireWire does here. Uh, we want to make sure that your content is constantly available and accessible um, for indexing, for readers to access, for libraries to to be able to have their subscriptions accessible. Um, we want people to be able to buy articles. We want your ads to always be up and always available. So we're constantly pushing um, to be highly rated um, and, and being above 99% on its own as a, as a hallmark, but 99.96 is a fantastic hallmark. So behind the scenes, and this is uh, all a part about what runs Highwire, we have our reporting and management tools. So we have our maintenance site right here where you can easily access different areas of the uh, J-Core, uh, your journals, all across all journals. Um, but we have our site management tools, subscription manager, and other links. So subscription manager is very easy. Um, you just add the IP addresses and ranges and then you add the institution name or the user, things like that. Um, and you can easily modify and edit any record. Um, you can build custom reports. So if you need reports for specific time periods, you can do so. Um, and then you'll be notified by email when it's ready. Um, but we have usage reports constantly running and then you can receive updates um, about what's happening with your content. Um, a standard report um, is, you know, in a, in a table format, um, but this is this is just the standard. We do a lot more in the customizations. And if you're looking for visualizations beyond just the table, I highly suggest our visor um, suites. So we've run through JCore, and now I want to talk about Folio. Folio is our ebook solution that's built on the Highwire JCore open platform. And what's great about that is that we actually offer the same strength in technology that we offer JCore in Folio. Um, it's a complete sales solution designed to increase uh, monetization of content to your Highwire site. Um, what this means is that we can offer um, subscriptions, we can offer advertisements, we can offer um, and, and we can offer e-commerce using a full shopping cart experience so they can really promote more books in a single sale. So the technology behind Folio. We've seen this slide before. Well, it's the same technology. Um, and it really is the same platform that societies and publishers and the most prolific ones really choose to meet business goals and readership demands. Um, it's built on Drupal um, and it allows us to quickly integrate and you'll see the how we integrate in a moment. Um, we offer um, so the same you know, self-service tools here again. And, and these are slides that I, I left out, but I want to just highlight this as what we have in JCore as well as um, Folio. So the benefits of Folio is you have a page-by-page -page viewing compatible with any browser. And it offers a paginated view 
um, of the book page, not just reading on the page as you saw in JCore, um, but it offers it it offers a actual view of the page, and we'll see that in just a moment. Um, we can integrate it with the journal content. So if you have a highly um, discovered um, journal program where your journals are getting lots of traffic but your books aren't getting as much traffic, we can integrate the content together so that you, we can leverage your journal traffic and highlight the books. And the same goes with books. If your journals aren't as prominent as your books, we can um, integrate them together and drive more traffic to both. Uh, we're offering social sharing of ebooks, chapters, and pages. It's very flexible e-commerce options. Um, these are ad there's advertising um, similar to the UHLC and JCore, um, and it's really a responsive design for a mobilized, op a mobile optimized reading experience. Um, we offer watermark PDFs um, for downloads. Integrated book and journal search, which I'll show you in a moment. And then we also have search within the book. Uh, we have downloadable PDFs for each chapter as well as counter reports. And counter is a big one. Obviously, we're, we're counter compliant. We offer counter reports for both Folio and JCore. So here's some ideas of how different it can look. So three different examples, three different types of views. So you can very quickly see just by cycling through how different Folio can look. And this is following the JCore foundation. And this allows you to very easily um, customize your book to your needs. Um, so we'll work with you on design, or you can bring in an ex, uh, a, a design that you've worked, designer that you've worked with in the past, and we can build a folio site that's great for your book experience and for your readers. So what powers folio? Well, it's right here. It's the it's the same technology stack. Um, it we offer the same functionality, you'll bring in content through Highwire Express. Um, it's semantically tagged, analyzed with added hyperlinks, and then goes through the same tool set. So the, every time um, we you know, upgrade Highwire Express for JCore and Folio, both of them utilize that synergetic development. At the top level, we have our front end display that where our folio lives, um, but it utilizes the same technology um, behind the scenes, which really is fantastic for that foundational support for your book publishing program. And there we are. So let's do a quick site walkthrough. So the home page, you'll, you'll notice it looks slightly different than Folio. I mean, sorry, forgive me, slightly different than JCore, but offers the same sort of two-column design. And you'll see this, uh, again, throughout the Highwire experience. Um, the, the Folio is really built with a marketing carousel right up top. So if you want to highlight new books, um, sales, anything like that, you can very easily do so by making working on the marketing carousel and you'll see the red book atlas right here as an example of a page frame or pane that's frozen right now on this screenshot of the marketing carousel. Uh, we highlight recently published titles, um, so things that are brand new. Uh, we highlight popular titles. And, and again, we go with a two column design for optimized browsing and like JCore, Folio is built using a responsive web design that allows you to browse on many different devices. Um, so this is, is, is great, and we're, we're dedicated to offering support through all types of devices and browsers. All right, so if we jump to a book, um, it follows the same two-column design. Uh, we have a toolbar for saving and sharing, um, and we have a table of contents where you can access and jump to sections and chapters of the book, so you don't have to just 
sort of click through all the pages of the book to find the area. Um, so it, it's a very nice way of organizing content. And it, when you submit content through Highwire Express um, to be published on Folio, we'll automatically pull those chapters out and then highlight them individually. Um, and one of our the favorites is the very large Read Now button for those who uh, need the large experience to find exactly what they're looking for. Uh, we see a lot of traffic to these buttons. So the reading experience, we partner with Tizra, um, a company that offers um, uh, read, a full reading experience online for books. Um, page by, it offers page by page viewing that's compatible with any browser. Um, and this is to say it offers pagination um, so that you can very easily get to different pages. Um, we even have our jump pager up in the top right hand corner. Um, you can search within the book with a great way to find information uh, as you're in the reading experience and don't have to jump back to the web page. Um, you can expand and reduce the size of the page. So if you look over in the left hand column where you see the plus, minus, and then the list, you can expand and uh, shrink the size of the page depending on the device so that you can have an, a, an, an, an optimal reading experience. We also offer the same TOC access so that if you want to jump to a different part of the page, you can easily do so. Uh, and then we have access to resources and so social sharing all through the reading experience. Um, and you can also easily get to PDFs and things like that. So the last thing I want to show you on Folio is our search. And the search is slightly different here, but it still follows the same methodology where you have our, our um, facets as well as search results. So search comes in a couple of different um, flavors where we have the search within the book. We have our basic search where you can quickly scan it as well as a, a full advanced search. Um, that I showed you in jCore where you can easily get to different sections or, or specific search results. Um, but we also offer full faceted results um, throughout the search um, experience. Um, you can see that we've highlighted um, subjects and you can find uh, 115 um, results based on adolescent health, for example. Um, and we have our icons for showing what is popular, um, or, or so forgive me, what you have access to. Um, and then uh, you see all the results and the best match. So again, this you leverages the same technology. Um, so as we upgrade search for both platforms, we are able to easily do uh, you know make changes and upgrade as search um, information changes. So there we go. So thank you. Uh, this is uh, this has been the walkthrough of uh, it's our overview of JCore and Folio. Um, if you have questions, feel free to email me at kgleason. That's k g l e a s o n at highwire.org. Um, we're always interested in new ideas for Folio, or, or if you're interested in um, joining Folio and uh, the Highwire family, um, we're we're excited about offering a great online ex reading experience for both and Folio and JCore. Um, so feel free to send questions. But I want to reiterate that as we're uh, developing Folio and JCore, that these products are built on an open platform, and that we're always looking to grow and expand your publishing uh, program. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and uh, if you do have questions, be sure and let us know. And we encourage you to watch for additional webinars that we'll be having on other high wire products. Thanks again. Bye-bye.